This module deals with Unix architecture. What that means is, I will be explaining in this module how the computer that you are using or the Unix terminal that you are using fits into the university or corporate computer system as a whole. It's quite a difficult uh, concept to try and describe what it is without showing you some diagrams, which is what I'll be doing in this module. First I'll just int introduce some terminology. Unix is a terminal-based operating system. Not many operating systems are terminal-based. I'll show you what that means. It means that there is essentially one computer. Many users may be using that one computer. Now, we've got to get our concepts right in our head. A keyboard and a screen do not constitute a computer. They constitute a terminal. Well, in the Unix world, at least, they constitute a terminal. So what I'm trying to say is, in many Unix systems, you will find a collection of terminals, or a collection of keyboards and monitors, all connected to the one computer, and they might be scattered around the building. So that means that you can sit down at a terminal and log in and be sharing the same computer with many other people. You'll be sharing the same memory, you'll be sharing the same hard disk, you'll be sharing the same floppy drive, if there is one, and so on and so on. Compare this with PCs, which is what most people are quite familiar and comfortable with, where there is only one computer. That computer has a single monitor and a single keyboard, so there's only ever one person using the PC. Now that PC may be connected within a network, so it may be connected to a bunch of other PCs, but each person will have their own individual computer with their own terminal as well. In a Unix system, there is only one computer, often, and several people connected to it. What this means is that because there's several people all using the one computer, if one person is doing a very large and CPU or memory intensive task, the computer can slow down. So you'll find that everybody else's programs will be running more slowly. Now, in a network environment, that doesn't really happen. People's computers are only ever being used by them. The only thing that's ever going to slow down is the access of resources across the network, such as files or printers. I'll show you a diagram of a network system versus a terminal-based system in a second. Before I do, I should just mention that uh, you'll find a lot of terminals are simply text-based. In other words, they're incapable of displaying graphics such as icons and so on. However, other terminals are quite capable of displaying what we call GUI, graphical user interfaces, GUIs, with icons and mouses. And if such a terminal is working in an, a Unix system, they're often called X terminals. So an X terminal is not a computer. It is simply a powerful terminal. The terminal is dumb because the computer is the machine that does all the thinking. The terminal does no thinking. It just does displaying. I also don't want people to think that PCs are the only types of computers that can exist within a network. Unix is very capable of existing within a network. In fact, Unix was probably the first major operating system to be used extensively with networks. It's interesting to note that the biggest network in the world at the moment, which is the Internet, was developed entirely on the Unix system. It has now spread to many other operating systems, but its initial development was done on Unix. So let's have a look at the contrast between a computer network and a computer with terminals. Firstly, we'll have a look at a network. Let's say you're working in a corporation and that co corporation has a network. Then what you'll find is on everybody's desk you'll find a computer, one computer on every desk. Every computer will have its own keyboard, monitor and mouse and those computers will all be connected together via network cables and they may also be connected or you may also find on the network a server. Now a server is just another computer. It has probably its own keyboard and mouse and monitor, although it may not. And it's a special computer in the, in the sense that that's where a vast amount of company-wide information is stored. It's stored in a central location for easier backups and so on. 
However, it's important to note that that server is just yet another computer on the network. It's just a more important computer on the network. Now, compare and contrast this particular diagram with the next diagram. Now, before I move on, I'll just mention that every node on this network is usually termed either a PC or a workstation. They're typically called PCs if they're running uh, Windows or perhaps a Macintosh operating system. And they're typically called workstations if they're running some version of Unix. Now, the next diagram is a single computer that has five terminals. Each terminal does no thinking. All the thinking is done on the one computer. This is not a network. A network implies more than one computer. And in this diagram, there is a single computer. And there's a cable running from that computer to everybody's desk on which you'll find simply a keyboard and a screen. You could also find a mouse, in, in which case the terminal would probably be an X terminal, a very uh, powerful terminal. But even an X terminal is a dumb terminal in the sense that it does no thinking. Now that we hopefully understand the difference between the two systems, it should be said that Windows systems do not usually work in a terminal environment. It is very, very rare that you'll find dumb terminals hooked up to a single Windows computer. Windows NT or uh, Windows 2000 has just introduced the capability to run terminal-based applications. In other words, to have multiple users logged on simultaneously to the one computer. It's possible to do it, but that usage is not very widespread at the moment. Almost exclusively, Windows computers run in a network environment. Unix is capable of running in both environments, either as one computer with a series of terminals or as a network of workstations. OK, well, that concludes the chapter on Unix. Let's now get straight into the Unix shell.